Thank you so much, Provost Schultz, for that kind introduction. And welcome, graduates, families, and friends. And congratulations, class of 2022. Let's give you a round of applause. This class is extra special to me because I get to celebrate my very first UW-Madison commencement with all of you. I want to acknowledge and thank the members of the faculty who are here and who have supported the graduates they've taught, advised, and mentored over a number of years. Let's give our faculty a round of applause. And speaking of advice and support, I also want to say a special thank you to Regents President Karen Walsh and UW System President Jay Rothman for their strong leadership, for being staunch supporters of UW-Madison, and also for being such trusted advisors for me. Thank you. I'm also absolutely thrilled that Emmy Award-winning journalist, New York Times best-selling author, and most important, UW alum, Charlie Behrens is here. Charlie built a whole new brand as Wisconsin's ambassador to the world. In other words, he gets paid to do something that many of you have been doing and hopefully will keep doing for free. He's already educated me on the importance of ordering buttered rye bread with my Friday fish fry. And uh, we've given each of you a copy of his book and look forward to hearing his good advice. Charlie, thanks for being with us today. Now, today we confer degrees on 1,758 graduates, and about 1,200 of you are here in person, following a tradition begun in 1854. Where are our doctoral degree candidates? Make some noise. All right. Professional degrees, MD, JD, MPH, MPA. You're a little uh, hesitant about that there, but okay. How about master's degree candidates? Make some noise. Nice and loud, I like that. And those of you earning undergraduate degrees from our great institution today? All right. Now, I do want to recognize one group for today, for whom today has particularly special meaning. If you are in the first generation in your family to earn a college degree, please stand as you're able so we can recognize you. Congratulations. I also want to recognize our grads who are veterans or are serving on active duty or in the reserves. Please stand as you are able so we can thank you for your service. Now there's one graduate for whom I especially want to cheer. Now look, many of you went through really tough things in these past years. But few approached the challenges that this young man faced when he became ill and his doctors determined that he urgently needed a heart transplant. That was less than two years ago. And today, he will walk across this stage to accept a degree in personal finance from our School of Human Ecology with a new heart. His proud family is in the stands, and we join them in immense gratitude to the team of doctors here at UW and the anonymous donor who saved his life. Anthony Jenak, where are you? There you are. We are so happy you are here. You're doing well, and congratulations. Now, one of the things that has made this class so special 
is the extraordinary care you've shown one another and that you've shown to our community. You've made friendships that will last a lifetime. And you've done that even in the midst of a global pandemic that forced you to learn new ways of doing nearly everything to keep each other safe. In the proud tradition of the Wisconsin idea, you've put your skills to work in the community to solve problems big and small. You've even helped us win national recognition as a 2022 most engaged campus for college student voting. Now, of course, you've had a lot of fun along the way here as well. And did you know that you've helped consume 240,000 brats and 96,000 gallons of Babcock ice cream in the past four years? <laughs> yeah, you've worked off some of those calories too. And any guesses about your number one flavor? What was most popular? Anyone in the front want to suggest? Okay, we, Blue Moon was the guess, but actually it's chocolate chip cookie dough. So there you go. You've also helped us celebrate the 50th anniversary this year of Title IX, the law that said that women get to play sports too. And boy, did we celebrate. <laughs> to our amazing volleyball Badgers and our six-time national champion women's hockey team, and to all the 850 student athletes who've given us a whole lot to cheer about, thank you. Thank you for that. Now, all of you are graduating into a world that faces a constellation of challenges. But the good news is that at no moment in human history have we been better prepared to address those challenges. Professor Bill Cronin recently spoke about this campus's extraordinary contributions to the world. He said, quote, there are many things we did together that were impossible. They couldn't be done. But we didn't know they couldn't be done. And so we figured out a way to do them. During your time here at UW-Madison, you've helped us to do impossible things, like creating new biofuels from switchgrass and poplar trees, editing the human genome, to prevent and treat devastating diseases. Our student speaker, Kirsten Gimsey, has been deeply involved in this work. And it's just one of the many impressive things about her, as you're going to hear shortly. You've also helped with research to give us better ways to spot disinformation online as we grapple with technologies that can do a great deal of good and a great deal of harm. And where are our artists, musicians, poets, and performers, the folks who added color and beauty to our world when that felt nearly impossible? If you are a poet, an artist, a musician, raise your hand, wave to us. Let's give you a minute to do that. Your creations remind us of what it is to be human. Thank you. Now, you are now graduates of one of the very best public universities and one of the very best universities in the nation. We're also one of the top five producers of future faculty members in the whole United States. And we're in pretty good company. The other four are Michigan, Stanford, UC Berkeley, and Harvard. So yes, on Wisconsin. The credential that you've earned here will open lots of doors. And as you walk through those doors, I hope you will keep in mind three essential things that this moment requires of us. First, remember your big whys. The Pulitzer Prize-winning poet Mary Oliver asked, tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. We all have hundreds of small everyday tasks that need doing, and many of those make possible the big things that bring meaning and joy to our lives. 
but those small tasks can take up a lot of room. And so notice where you're spending your time and make sure you're prioritizing the things that are truly meaningful to you. From time to time, ask yourself what really matters to you and make sure you are making some time for those. Second, as others have said, if you want to go far, go together. One of the most important things you've learned here is the value of working across. Here at UW-Madison, we've never been very good at just staying in our own lanes. We know that if you want to aim really high and make a difference in the world, that isn't, it just isn't something that you can do all alone. So I hope you'll continue to seek out opportunities to collaborate, to go farther by joining with others. And that you'll also remember that sometimes you can go farthest of all by combining your talents with people whose interests and skills and backgrounds are very different from your own. Third, give yourself and others a little grace, especially in polarized times where that can be hard to do. If you're taking the kinds of risks you need to do to do big things, there will be moments when you drop the ball here and there. And so I want to close by giving you a way to put those moments into perspective. Now, this advice comes to me via my sister, and she's my younger sister, so I confess it took me a little while to realize that I had a lot to learn from her. Whatever comes next from you, you're going to be juggling plenty of balls. And you know what? You are sometimes going to drop some of them. It happens to all of us. But what my sister pointed out is that many of the balls you'll have to juggle are rubber, but some are crystal. And those rubber balls, they bounce. If you drop one, you can pick it up on the next bounce and try again. But the crystal balls don't bounce. They break, and there's just no real way to put them together. So in your work life and in the rest of your life, be sure you're prioritizing what's critically important. Your family, your health, your closest friends, the things at work that really matter, so that when you do drop a ball or two, the balls you drop are the rubber ones. Now graduates, please take just a moment to look around you, and family and friends, you as well. Today, you are part of something incredibly precious and somewhat rare, a peaceful and joyful gathering of people who have come together to celebrate, notwithstanding their differences. You have different beliefs, different priorities, different religions, races, life experiences, and yet you come here from all over Wisconsin, the United States, and dozens of countries around the world. And today we are united, united in this celebration and in this sense of a deep connection to this place and to one another that will last a lifetime. Graduates, I hope you will continue to be in each other's lives and that you will come back and visit us often you will always find a warm welcome here. Congratulations, class of 2022, and on Wisconsin.